My dear brothers and sisters, this sun Lenten season, we had been looking about regaining focus in our lives. And therefore, so far we had been in a way powerfully looking at it in regaining our focus. For the past two Sundays, we had regained gratitude and we had also regained repentance. Gratitude because we heard Peter saying, Master, it is so good to be here. And the repentance, unless you repent, you shall likewise perish. Today we have this great parable, a parable of repentance. And we know that this parable is a remarkable parable and also a very interesting parable and we can simply not miss this for sure. It was Jesus saying about the young man who hit the bottom in a way. He hit the bottom rock and therefore he got up. When you get up, you do not know what to do, but this man, when he got up, he found it, that he had to do it. While it sounds simple, it takes real courage, my dear friends, in this case, to face the possibility of rejection, to get up and to go to his father. The face of possibility of rejection or, and the scorn on his face. That young man overcame fear. Remember this. This young boy, the younger son, overcame fear. As we hear in uh, Joshua chapter 1 verse 9, do not be afraid or discouraged. People today often feel paralyzed with fear. And therefore, the perfect love casts out fear. If you have that perfect love, it should cast out fear from you. Interesting, my dear friends, the opposite of love is, the opposite of love is fear, not hate. The opposite of love is fear. Fear keeps us from returning to the Father. Fear separates each other because of fear. This young man in Jesus' parable must have been tempted to stay with the swines. Why? Because at least there he was in control. He was happy about the situation. The swines did not reject him nor laugh at him. But he was happy there. It took him a lot of courage to get up to face his father. So you see, the potentials puts him down, but the capacity within him is able for him to get up. The fear is there, but he knows that he has to get up. You and I have to get up. The big brother is more than ready to throw all the little morals that he has in the failure face of his brother. Therefore we see at the end the big brother stands outside. The big brother stands outside. But you and I have come for the celebration inside. And the younger brother who faces that fear gets up, moves away from the situation comes into his father's house and there is a celebration. This is Eucharist. You and I are also like this younger brother that even though we have sinned, we know the fear that is inside us. My spiritual life will be lost. Therefore, I have to attend this Holy Eucharist. You come into the celebration. But the younger brother was standing outside. And he was questioning the part of how this younger brother gets a celebration. So the elder brother standing outside was questioning all this, but not coming inside for a celebration. 
you and I have come into the celebration and that is the Holy Eucharist, my dear friends. The fear that brought him inside is something incredible. The desire to get up and go to the Father. Have you that courage and strength when you are in that fear, able to get up and come to the Father and receive that celebration? Therefore, my dear friend, one of those greatest uh, Protestant theology, the Protestant theology in the 20th century, his name is Paul Tillich, made a distinction between heteronomy and antonomy. The autonomy and the heteronomy he wants to bring in. The heteronomy is that law that is from another, from outside. It is not from within. Heteronomy is the law that comes from outside. Whereas autonomy is the law that comes from within, from oneself. Therefore, we find these two laws that he speaks of. And I'll take you to this parable through these two laws. And he adds another law saying, theonomy, that is the law of God. The law of God is also important. Therefore, we apply heteronomy, autonomy, and theonomy in today's parable. Don't forget about this. We, both, we will be going back and forth between heteronomy and autonomy. What is heteronomy? All the laws that come from outside. The government laws, the religion, the laws of the religion, the laws of my parents and my family. These are all laws called heteronomy. I have to listen. I have to follow. The autonomy is the law that I make for myself. I should do this. I must be like this. I have my own way of living. I have to be like that. Therefore, this is autonomy life in each and every one of us. The theonomy part is, yes, God is the one I have to listen to finally. And I'll take you to heteronomy where this elder son, I'll take first the elder son. The elder son says, Dad, listen, I have done everything what you told me to do. I have been following your laws. I have been so faithful to you. And therefore he shows that he has been heteronomically following the law from outside, that is his father's laws. But was he following it truly? Now we should know that when he said, when your son, after doing all this, comes back, now you give him a party. That means this elder son, in his heteronomic way of following the law, was not joyful in his life. Even though he was listening to his father's laws, even though he said, Dad, I had been doing everything for you. He was not joyfully doing it. Therefore, we come to the younger brother who is like a teenager. Dad, you know, all that I want, you know, I have to take it because as a teenager, give what is mine. Give what is mine. Give it to me. Let me go and do what I like. I don't like to be subjected to what you are saying, but you know, I have to get my share, give my share, let me go my make, make my life, I will live, you don't worry about me. That is autonomy. I will do everything for myself. And therefore, in that autonomy, he takes his share, he goes away, he squanders everything, and then he comes to his realization. The theonomy comes in, and then he says, I have to get up. I have to go to my father. This is the theonomy part that enters into the life of the younger brother. Whereas you find the elder brother now, when he is standing outside, the father comes and says, hey, listen, listen, now you don't get angry. You don't be outside in the celebration. Come inside. You're always there with me. 
you understand i know you are very faithful i know you had been very faithful to me ha you did not give me a party like this to my friends even though i was so faithful but listen this fellow was lost is come back we have found him he was dead now he is alive get that sense into your mind whether this elder brother understood this part or not the gospel does not say because the theonomy will finally do in our lives so back and forth you find that we will be facing this heteronomical life and the autonomical life in us with the ruling of the theonomy surrendering to the theonomy finally that is how what the father wanted both the sons to know is they have to be drawn finally to the theonomy that is the reason why people call this not the prodigal son but the prodigal father the father had to play the role of bringing both the sons one who was like an heteronomical the other one was autonomical bring them to the theonomical and make them understand both are of value both have to come in time to celebrate the father wants both the son to look at life life in all its fullness amen